on the mound. Charlie Morton making start number seven, as we said, uh, coming off two above average starts. Very good last time out. Uh, one of the most impressive uh, things about that, and he went six innings just giving up two runs, was the fact that in six innings, just 80 pitches. So not only good, but efficient. And uh, a power guy like a Charlie Morton, usually you don't characterize those kind of guys as efficient. They'll labor and they'll work hard and they'll throw a lot of pitches and strike a lot of people out. But uh, Charlie was uh, quite good with the pitch count last time out. Here's the defense behind Charlie Morton. Andrew McCutcheon in center. He's flanked by Lastings Village in left. And Delwyn Young is in right field tonight. Aki Iwamura and Ronnie Cedeno are up the middle with Garrett Jones and Andy LaRoche patrolling the corners. Domit catches Morton. As Chris Heisey is ready to step in. Pirates wearing their alternate black jersey top and white pant combinations tonight. And we're underway. Ball one. Chris uh, Heisey out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. 17th round draft choice, 2006. Signed by Jeff Brookins from Mechanicsburg, PA. Ball foul off to the right. Kind of your neighborhood, isn't it? Indeed. Chris Heisey, who uh, made his major league debut this past week. Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire. Jerry Davis at first. Sam Holbrook at second. And Brian Knight at third. Jerry Davis is the crew chief. One and two, yeah. I've got a new favorite visiting player now. Canicksburg's mm -hmm. yep. Chris Heisey out of Messiah College. By the way, uh, the Reds minor league player of the year last year. Chris Dickerson placed on the disabled list at the end of April, so they called up Chris Heisey. He's uh, 0 for 7, the early going of his big league career. And he takes two balls and two strikes from Charlie Morton. It looks more like the slider. He'll throw uh, the breaking ball, and you get a couple of different effects. That uh, slower, uh, uh, lesser break right there that you just saw. You also see the real downer that gives him a lot of break. Right Jammed now. him. Yep. Rolled to third, and infield single for Heisey. Now, see, the, there's the difference. Last night, the Pirates were really having some good at-bats against Bronson Roy. Hitting the ball right in the button, maybe not... Uh, geared to go out of the ballpark, but they were at people. Now this one, a little chop down the third baseline, not hit very hard, but it's a base hit. That's the way the game can go. This young man runs very well, above average runner, and by the time Andy is able to get to it and turn it loose, he does everything right, but Heisey beats it out. His first major league hit is an infield single. That'll be a souvenir tossed into the dugout, I'm sure. They did, and then they pretended they were throwing it into the stands. We got a different baseball, the decoy ball. Strike yeah. is called now on Brandon Phillips. And John Russell wants to get uh, a good amount of work from Charlie Morton because uh, as good as the bullpen has been, it's been very busy. And you, you don't know uh, how much you can use them early in the season, how long they will hold up if they keep going out there for you know, three and four innings uh, a night. It, that can't continue. Step off. Brandon Phillips last night 0 for 4. Pirates swept the Reds in mid April in the three game series. Phillips bounces this ball foul. 1 2 on Brandon Phillips. Again, one of those nights where uh, you'd rather be a pitcher than a hitter. Hitters just kind of hate this. The ball can get in on their hands. Hard to get loose, as loose as you would like to be, as loose as you will be in the middle of the summer. But the pitcher's out there, his, he's the warmest guy. He keeps throwing pitches, and so he stays relatively warm compared to everybody else. Still 0 2 as Brandon Phillips just gets a piece of it. Starting to heat up a bit, Brandon Phillips. Who hit 20 homers drove in 98 last year. And the 21, Steve and I talked about this on the radio side, that 21 of those 98 RBIs last season against Pittsburgh for Brandon Phillips. O2 pitch, runner goes. Bounce to the right side and right through that hole. Hit and run action. They've got runners at the corners. You could not have drawn it 
up any better if you're a Cincinnati Reds fan. Just a little chop. I don't know if the Pirates would have gotten two, but they would have had the lead runner. Now Brandon Phillips fooling around a little bit because nobody is at first base for the Pirates. Garrett Jones will get him back to first base, but there's the move as Aki goes over towards second. They chop it that way. A little tapper for Brandon Phillips. It's a base hit, and the Pirates now have their infield at double play depth with Joey Votto to the plate. Votto 0 for 4 last night. And nearly hit by the pitch, and Phillips will take off and go to second base. And early trouble for Morton and the Bucks. And you see how innocently something like this can start out. That little chop down the third baseline turns into an infield single, and now you got a mess. Second and third, nobody out. It takes away the double play possibility. Almost inviting some trouble there because there was no play at second base. Yeah. Ryan threw it down there anyway. No harm done. And a fly ball, plenty deep to bring home a run. Hutchins sets up for the throw toward third. Phillips will tag and go there. And it's a sacrifice fly for Votto and a 1 0 lead in the first. And as funny as it sounds, that's okay. In the big picture, top of the first inning, the Pirates can live with two runs that the Reds might score in the top of the first if Charlie now settles down and, and uh, just gets it going here and gets his feet on the ground. You can live with that. Not much fun to look at, but uh, it's just the way it is. Infield will come in. Scott Rowland at the plate had two hits last night. Drove in a run. An RBI double in the eighth inning. After the error was charged to uh, Andy LaRoche to start the frame, brought home Votto with a very important unearned run. And a strike is called on Rowland. That's the slider, not as much break, not as much downward action, and more speed. Curveball is the opposite of all those things. A one count. And it's one ball and one strike. On Roland with Jay Bruce on deck. An infield hit for Heisey, his first hit in the big leagues. A hit and run single for Phillips and the sacrifice fly for Votto. Foul ball. Goes to one ball and two strikes on Roland. Yeah, so uh, Charlie has thrown him three different pitches the slider in for a strike. The changeup just barely missed downstairs. Now comes with a fastball. So, fastball set up properly. And Scott Roland is a little bit behind that 92 mile an hour fastball. And now you got the two strike situation. You might think about trying for that strikeout. First base open, second base open too. Line drive, fair ball. He kept it inside that line. And Roland will go to second base with an RBI double, a 2 0 lead. So Scott Roland sits and waits on that slow curve ball. And you can see the water bought up there as there's still a lot of moisture on the field. And what, a couple doubles for Scott last night? And uh, one here tonight. Gives Roland his 15th RBI of the season. Quick 2 0 lead. And he's in scoring position for Jay Bruce. And this fastball misses. Three career starts for Morton against the Reds. A record of 1 and 2 and a 589 ERA. His first start. This season versus Cincy. Morton came over last summer from the Atlanta Braves, along with outfielder Gorky's Hernandez and left handed pitcher Jeff Locke in the Nate McLeod deal June 3rd of last year. Former third round pick of the Braves. He went 5 and 9 last season. 
in 18 starts with a 4.55 ERA, and he struggled immensely in his first handful of starts this season. And questions came up, especially after he didn't get past the second inning of his third start against Milwaukee. Gave up six runs, five earned, and then lasted only three innings the next start in Houston. People asking John Russell and Neil Huntington, you're going to keep him in the rotation? And they said, absolutely, this guy's got too much talent. You don't give up on somebody like this. And Morton certainly appreciates the confidence that this organization has shown in him. Two balls, two strikes to count. Bobby Crosby seated next to John Russell. We got the fastball by him earlier in the count. Now two and two. Hit in the air to center. For McCutcheon. Another fastball, but uh, like Bronson Arroyo got, that ball hit right on the button, but right at an outfielder. Charlie Morton talking about the support of the organization the good word tonight from the Pirates pitcher I feel like there has been so much support in this clubhouse and there has been so much support from the front office They made it clear that all I need to do is go out and throw the ball and I wasn't doing that I was looking everywhere for answers and the answers are just here. I just got to throw the ball and believe in it Yep simplification so Try not to get cluttered and overthink it overcook it once in a while, I just got to say, hey, I've got this ability. Let's see if we can just trust it. Ball one on Johnny Gomes. Pinch hit single last night and thrown out at the plate. Two for six in his career against Morton. Two and zero. Oh. That's going to head toward the seats. Well, Greg, it's one of those nights where it is raw, it is cold, it's been rainy. Uh, no baseball player wants to really play on a night like this but you do because that's that, that's what you do point being you want the real hard-nosed guys to say okay yeah it's cold it's miserable and everything now you're gonna go out and play you, you don't get trapped in this all this business that what a what a rotten night you got to get on the other side of that and go about your business got two and two on Gomes as he fouls off the Morton fastball you know the old saying, somebody's going to win this game. And, uh, you know, it might be overdone a little bit, but uh, sometimes the mentally tough have a little bit of an edge. Two two count. Rolling the lead off second. Three hits in the inning, and ball three. Talked to Domit before the game about Charlie Morton and how excited he and the organization is. Uh, I feel like he, in, in Domit's words, last couple of starts were turning points for Charlie Morton. He said, you know, stuff-wise, I think Charlie's got the best stuff on the team, sometimes 96 to 97 on the gun with that 12 to 6 hammer, talking about that curveball. Pitch has popped up, and the first baseman, Garrett Jones, for the final out, a long half inning. The Reds score twice. 26 pitches, and now the Pirates go to work against Johnny Cueto. The Buckos, Aki Iwamura, followed by Andy LaRoche and Andrew McCutcheon. Garrett Jones clean up, and then Ryan Doman, a 364 career average against Cueto. Lastings Millage. Three for ten lifetime against this starter, as is Delwyn Young in right field. Ronnie Cedeno, the shortstop, and Charlie Morton. Cueto has been tough on the Pirates, six and two in nine career starts. Just so-so this year, one and one. Uh, take a look at the numbers: 5.18 ERA. Uh, San Pedro de Macorís, Dominican Republic. Cueto, 11-game winner last 
year for the Reds. Here we go. Ball one on Aki Iwamura. He has faced Cueto previously. As we saw this right-hander face Daniel McCutcheon back on Saturday night, April the 17th here at PNC Park. Cueto went five innings, gave up three runs. Iwamura was 0 for 3 against him. Bouncing ball toward the right side. Votto very active over there. Scrambles back to first. After Phillips takes the chopper and throws on to the first baseman, Joey Votto. And here's how the Reds take up the defense behind Cueto. Brought to you by Mercedes. It's Johnny Gomes in left. Heisey in center. Bruce in right. Infield rolling Yanish Phillips and Votto with Hernandez behind the plate for Cueto. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer, Mercedes. Andy LaRoche takes a strike. Really, everybody in the lineup has good numbers against Cueto. It's kind of interesting. Oh, six and two against us. I was going to say, it's interesting, to, <laughs> it's interesting to see that. The LaRoche, 364 career. Here they are, Steve, right? Yeah. 364, LaRoche. McCutcheon, 455. Jones, 500. Doman, 364. Wow. Millage, 300. Young 300, Cedeno 500. Those are the batting averages <laughs> against Cueto. It should be easy then. Yeah. Know? You know, you saw that graphic they were talking about uh, in the open, but uh, Cueto, the first time through the batting order, uh, opponents hitting 333, and the Pirates, uh, when they have had the bats going, it's not been every night, but uh, they've had a tendency to get some stuff done, especially behind Andrew McCutcheon in the first inning. You hear in front of him. <laughs> hear talk often of trying to have good uh, at bats and try and work pitchers and uh, really the pitch count is so important these days because it seems so that 100 uh, pitch count is almost a magical number these days for many teams uh, Dusty Baker has made it a point to talk about Cueto that, that he has to become more efficient it's one of the reasons why Cueto has not gone more than six innings in any one start. He has gone six innings three times, but five innings three times. His uh, six inning stint against the Mets last Wednesday threw 118 pitches. And lifted to right for Jay Bruce. You know, you take a look to it last year, he starts 31 games, 171 innings. That's not a lot of innings per start. Last three outings there for Cueto. So there's the 118 pitch, uh, six inning stint. That five inning game against St. Louis, he threw 82 pitches and threw 88 pitches against San Diego when he gave up five runs in six innings. They still have very high hopes for Cueto, and they think they have the makings of a phenomenal rotation as McCutcheon hits one hard the other way, but Bruce is there to make the catch at the wall. Ten pitches. Oh, there's efficiency. Two nothing Reds. Coverage begins tomorrow at six, right here on FSN. Go Make, Pens. Yes, sir. Make it a double header. You watch the Buckos tomorrow afternoon, and just keep it right here on FSN and watch the Penguins tomorrow night. We'll have them both for you. The Pirates and the Reds. Can't make it out to the ballpark. Get your sports fix tomorrow. Yeah. A lot of folks will actually come to the game tomorrow and then head across the bridge. And yep. even if you don't have a ticket, I know a lot of people like to watch it on the big screen. Strike called on Ramon Hernandez, veteran catcher. 279 average with five RBIs. One and one. Three career starts for Charlie against the Reds. One and two. Crowd him inside. Wow. <laughs> Crowded him inside. That's yeah. what he did with it. He was able to fight that ball off, kind of inside out ball. Just slice it just out of the reach of Iwamura. See where Ryan Doman sets up? And they get it in there. He just kind of slices it. Gets the hands in far enough where it can push that ball the other way. Just out of the reach of Aki. 
I think that is probably an example of Evil Mora. People are asking about Evil Mora. Uh, that I, from what you hear from people, they think that the range is limited because of that knee, though he says it's about 100%. He doesn't feel any pain. Still has that knee brace on. So a couple of balls to start each one of the first two innings. That gets the uh, Reds engine going. Isaac, the little chop to third, and this one just out of the reach of the Pirates' second baseman. You never know about a guy's range, you know, unless you're down there, just, just from our vantage point. And the only reason I say it is because that ball actually just came to a dead halt in shallow right field, which tells you from up here it looked like it was not hit all that hard. It wasn't, but you also have a soggy field. Sure, sure. But that's the only reason I bring up the range yep. thing. Yep. By the way, uh, you wonder if that's going to be a factor because all these outfielders are going to be picking up a wet baseball to try to get a grip on and throw properly. Two and one the count on Yanish. Now this is an important man for Charlie because he gave up a couple in the first. Now the leadoff single. If he doesn't get Yanish, then you're going to let Cueto bunt the guys over into scoring position. So uh, you'd, you'd like to see Charlie get this out. And then if Cueto bunts, then you're just putting one man in second base with two outs. A whole different feel. Two and two. Good fastball up and in. Time up. Up in. Actually, you got to go back and really give Ramon Hernandez a little tip of the cap for really putting the ball in play and, and, and finding something possible to happen because that was a pretty good pitcher's pitch. And put the ball in play, you never know what's going to happen. Fly ball to center field, McCutcheon. One away in the second. Well, now you get Cueto up there, and if he bunts, uh, it's at the cost of a second out to the Reds. The man at second base was uh, a lot different than second and third with one out. Cueto three for nine at the plate with a couple of sacrifice bunts. Strike one. Red 17 and 15 on the season. Three back of the Cardinals in second place in the National League Central. Milwaukee five back, then Pittsburgh six behind the Redbirds. Look out. It's up and in, and he bunts it foul. See, that's that's always been my uh, defense of not squaring around too early. You're almost like a target. He, he's right there, and then you know, he kind of fouled it back toward himself. I always got nervous when I squared around too early. But Ansi, lucky that ball didn't come back further at him. And Aquino, he kind of leaned into it. Yeah, and then the double whammy yeah. as the ball is fouled back toward him. It's, uh, I think the breaking ball is in order. And did he go? No, says first base umpire Jerry Davis. Good call, Greg. Good. See if he could lean out there and, and make another bunt attempt. Whoa, brother. Yeah, and, and, and he did. Yeah, he did offer. You can see he did not get it back in time, but he gets a break from the call on the appeal. That time he did. Maybe a bit of a makeup call there. Really uh, can't argue that one. One of the two he certainly offered. <laughs> See what you think? Yeah, he well, he's dropping. He's, he's dropping the bat down. Yeah, and that's a bun attempt. Yeah. He tried to be sneaky with it, didn't he? Sure. Yeah. Tricky See, a stuff. Late hit. Yeah. Tricky stuff. 
Will really get the second out without having to give up 90 feet. Just to keep an eye on Ramon Hernandez, I don't think you'll see him attempting too many stolen bases. Normally not. One stolen base last year for Ramon Hernandez. Eight in his major league career. And the strike on Chris Heisey, his first big league hit. The infield single to start the game and scored his first major league run. What was that? Uh, time was caught. I don't know if on a back swing there to practice swing, he accidentally tapped Doman apparently. On a strike on Heisey. As Steve said, the Reds minor league player of the year last season. Played the both double A and triple A levels. Well, uh, when we were showing Charlie earlier, we were uh, kind of highlighting that down curve ball uh, that was so effective uh, against the Cubs. Seems like tonight we've seen more sliders than curveballs to this point. It can always change. And it can change from club to club, which you want to feature too, if you think that Cincinnati is a better curveball hitting team. Fastball misses three and one on Heisey. And Sedeno going to go now and maybe a word of encouragement for Morton. Domit again saying that he has had to, to prod. Charlie Morton a little bit as has uh, Joe Kerrigan to go ahead and let it fly. Yeah, you'd rather take your chance with Heisey. You're looking down the barrel at Phillips, Votto, Roland, Bruce, Gomes. If you lose him, it's the man you want right here. And he walks him and it will be Brandon Phillips. During all the struggles, the one thing that's been a plus for Charlie is his control. His control has been quite good. Joe Kerrigan just constantly impressing upon Charlie Morton the importance of those first pitch strikes. And as other players uh, will tell you, nobody is more prepared than Joe Kerrigan. Uh, he has all the numbers for the pitching staff and the catchers, Domit, Jason Jaramillo. And Charlie's been told since he was 18 years old the importance of first pitch strikes. It's not like this is day one in the classroom. Brandon Phillips singled a hit and run single in the first. Hard hit. Oh, nice stop, Iwamura. Yep. Well played, Aki Iwamura. Hot smash. One of the harder hit balls so far, early portion of this game, and Iwamura robs Brandon Phillips of a hit and the Reds of a run. And at the bottom of the second, 2 0 Cincy. The Washington Nationals don't miss your chance to be a part of it by purchasing a commemorative bronze leaf to be on display near the statue. For more information, visit pirates.com slash Maz statue. Your own personalized bronze leaf to be a part of that tremendous display. What great design work on the yeah. statue. Really neat. Garrett Jones, Ryan Domit, and Lastings Millage against Johnny Cueto. Who was in pretty good company with his Major League debut. Ten strikeouts, no walks. Uh, but Juan Marichal, countryman, uh, did that also. Fly ball, hit pretty deep to right center. But Jay Bruce there. It's the third straight put out for Jay Bruce. That was April 3rd, 2008. Johnny Cueto. Seven innings, one hit, ten strikeouts, no walks. 
were talking about the Reds feeling like they are putting together a, a, a pitching staff to be reckoned with in the very near future. What with the Cueto, one of two Dominican dandies. Cueto won nine games as a rookie two years ago. Well, fouled out of play. And, of course, Edinson Volquez, who was acquired from the Rangers a couple of seasons back, was uh, hurt out with Tommy John surgery. Now, he has been suspended 50 games for testing positive for banned substance. Count two and one. You've got uh, Homer Bailey. There's Bronson Arroyo, who pitched a good ball game last night despite some hard hit balls off of him. You got the Mike Leak, their first round pick last year, who bypassed the minor leagues completely, and he's off to a, a real solid start to his major league career. Leak 3 0, an ERA of 310 in his first six major league starts. And then you've got in the minor leagues, the Cuban defector, the left hander, our oldest Chapman. As Domit pops this ball up. And the shortstop, Janish makes the catch in shallow left, two up and two down. Chapman, by the way, the night before last for Triple A Louisville, beat a Rochester club, that's the top farm club of the Twins. And he's now uh, three and one in six starts, 36 strikeouts in 32 innings with 18 walks and 27 hits. So he's not too far away, you wouldn't think. Big difference in the pitches thrown early in this ball game. Let's hope that balances out a little bit. Cueto very efficient. Charlie Scufflin but put a zero up there in the second inning. Village three for ten with a home run in his career against Cueto. 313 career hitter versus Cincy pitching. Talking about uh, Cueto's great debut when he went seven innings, striking out, ten walking nobody. Juan Marichal, 1960, his major league de debut against the Phillies, nine innings, one hit, 12 strikeouts. It's a nice way to break in. Village sends one deep at the center fielder, Heisey, makes the catch. So one ground ball and the rest fly ball outs against Cueto. That Rip Sewell, the inventor of the Ephus pitch, was born. Rip Sewell, the former Pirates pitcher, pitched for the Buccos for uh, 1938 through 1949. And one of the flashbacks was the 1946 All Star game where he had told Ted Williams he was going to throw him the Ephus pitch. And with the American League ahead eight to nothing, he threw him a couple. And then Ted Williams launched the home run off the Sewell Ephus pitch, supposedly the only time. That Sewell ever gave up a home run on the Ephus. This is, so it was a blooper coming in and a blooper going out. A lot of height yeah. on each one, but the latter, the further. This day in Pirates history, thank you, Day Automotive. The Ephus pitch. Big blooper. As Williams rounded the bases, Rip Sewell yelled to him, the only reason you hit it was because I told you it was coming. And Williams laughed and fans loved it. And Sewell got a standing ovation when he walked off the mound. And Ted probably made an adju a gesture to the fans. <laughs> 0 2 on Joey Votto. Ball two strikes on Votto. Got ahead of him and now pitch low and in two and two. Charlie trying that fastball down on the inside corner under the hands. Very effective pitch, close but didn't get the call. Wave and a miss. Fooled him. Looking for another fastball. Very awkward swing by Joey Votto and that's a better start for Charlie here in the third. You can see that the late decision to. Take a wave at that off speed pitch. Oh, 
It was always kind of a neat thing. You know, it's not enough just to get somebody out. You want to make them look bad in front of their friends and family. Just you know, fool them. You know, anybody can get them out on a good fastball and routine. Uh, but, boy, when you make them look bad, that's fun. And didn't hit it all that hard and almost dropped it in for another hit. Now, Roland. For another double. <laughs> yeah, doubled a line drive double in the first inning. Now, Morton has given up four hits. One hard hit was the Roland double. One was an infield single, a couple of seeing eye singles. And the hardest hit ball, perhaps, the ground ball to Aki. Off the bat of Brandon Phillips that ended the second. Charlie's given up seven home runs. It's his seventh start. Two and one on Scott Roland. Now 35 years old, a five time All Star. Seven gold gloves. Traded over from the Blue Jays last summer, and Walt Jockety reworked his contract over the winter to keep him in a red uniform. Drafted in 1993 by the Phillies. Had some run-ins with Tony Larusa in St. Louis and Larry Bow in Philadelphia. Yeah. So, unanimous Rookie of the Year, 97. Base hit. Scott Rowland, a one out single for the veteran third baseman. And now Charlie Morton will face Jay Bruce. Bruce glide out to Andrew McCutcheon in the first inning. One fastball riding out just a little bit off the outside corner. One ball, no strikes on Bruce. And yes, one and one. First round pick in 2005. 12 pick that year. Right after the Pirates selected Andrew McCutcheon. Rolling back to first. Greg, you're talking, uh, mentioning some minor league uh, stuff earlier. I had a chance to talk to Trent Jewett. He's now managing for the Nationals in Syracuse. Uh, one of our good friends. Uh, we think very highly of him. Hope that someday he'll get a chance to be a major league manager. But he's got Steven Strasburg now there, the phenom, the, the big bonus. Young man who is headed toward the Washington Nationals rotation. There's a uh, check swing that wasn't checked in time. Second strike. And he says he's uh, thinking that Strasburg is everything they thought he was going to be. And it's just not uh, going to be very long before he's up in the big leagues. But he's with Trent Jewett pitching for Syracuse in the International League. He's promoted to AAA right after the Altoona curve beat him in a ground ball to first. The play made at second as Garrett Jones throws to Sedano to retire Roland. Bruce on via the fielder's choice. Goes 3 6 on the scorecard. Sharply hit to Garrett Jones. Not the easiest double play to turn, and uh, Ronnie Sedano wisely decides not to make that throw back to first base. Pirates have struggled mightily turning double plays. And again, that one not tailor made, certainly not made to order, and perhaps not a high percentage of making it, but uh, just brings to mind that the Pirates, uh, as the season wears on and, and you get into those summer months, they're going to have to be tighter. They're going to have to play better defense uh, when they get the double play opportunities. Now keeping an eye on Jay Bruce. Has stolen a pair of bases. All weather parrot. Ain't nothing going to break his stride. Nothing going to hold him down, huh? Yep. And there goes the runner. And another stolen base against the Pirates, though. That was a closer play. 
trying to swipe tag. But Bruce in behind it. Well, Ryan Domit, uh, I don't think had a real, real great shot at getting him at second base. Uh, I don't know if we got another angle of it, but it looked like Jay Bruce had several steps and he was well into motion by the time Charlie let go of the ball. Yeah, that's one of the reasons, no doubt, because it always takes two to contain the running game, but it's one of the reasons why Domit has thrown out just one of 22 attempting to steal this season. Got to have help from your pitcher, certainly. Third steal for Bruce in three attempts. Might have a chance to take a look, but we'll do it next inning as this ball is popped up and Charlie Moore is going to put up another zero on the board. Take a look at that steal later on. Charlie Morton heads back to the dugout. Two nothing Reds. Possible. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Chili, PNC Park. 2 0 Reds. Bottom third of the Pirates order Delwyn Young, Ronnie Cedeno, and Charlie Morton against Johnny Cueto. Mm. Up and in action. High necker in, we used to call that. Chim music. Gives one pause. Johnny Cueto trying to defy our statistic about having trouble the first time through a batting order. He's had six up, six down so far in the first two. First two innings. Delwyn Young's second start as a right fielder this season. Two switch hitters in the lineup for the Pirates. And Delwyn Young, they're trying to get him a few at bats because he's doing well coming off the bench, getting his share of hits as a pinch hitter and then some. So. Maybe that could translate into something concerning four bats in one evening. Pinch hit single last night, the ninth inning for him. But he comes up empty. Strike out. Yeah, take a look, if, uh, if we will, about the, uh, the stolen base. Bruce with his jump against Charlie Morton. Let's see how many steps. The set position. Yeah, an average, an average jump. I thought he had a little more traction early. An okay jump, but it wasn't as as much as I thought. Many times you'll see the, the stolen bases. That ball is through in the left field for base hit. Orlando Cedeno. Many times you see a stolen base. A guy have five, six, seven steps before the pitcher actually releases the ball, and then it's a done deal. The catcher has no chance. Morton now with a chance to sacrifice Sedano to second. So much talk about uh, trying to get Morton straightened out in terms of uh, you know, those first pitch strikes and just being better all the way around on the mound. Well, the other parts of the game too, he wants to make sure Situations like this help himself move that runner. Two nothing game. Get that bunt down. And with Scott Rowan right in on top of him, uh, the uh, the approach is to bunt the ball back toward uh, the first baseline because the first baseman has to hold the runner and break late. They don't want to bunt it right back toward the pitcher either, so. First baseline is the uh, direction of choice. Charlie, give a look to Tony Beasley, but I don't think there's any real change in approach at this point. Scott Rowland certainly doesn't think so. Bounce it off. One ball, two strikes. 
Uh, last night, Aki Iwamura got away with a bunt right at Roland. Roland decided not even to look at second. Delwyn Young had reached on the pinch hit single and moved to second on what uh, went as a sacrifice. Well, Morton wouldn't be so lucky. Morton does not run well at all. That's a dangerous thing, button it toward Roland for sure. And yeah, that's a strikeout. So not able to help himself, cannot move the runner. As he bunts the two strike pitch foul for the strikeout. Great, as you said, one and one so far in his first six starts. He's given up four home runs. given up his share of home runs in relation to number of big league starts almost averaging one home run given up per major league start as we said the Pirates much better against Plato the second time around yeah well that was the message you're trying to convey <laughs> I don't know if you got that or not but that's where that was our attempt Let's see if it works Native of the Dominican Republic, the baseball factory. Second time through the lineup, still hitting 300 against him. So we're still in business. If I ever write a book, and I think I want to do one sometime, there's going to be several chapters about playing winter baseball in the Dominican Republic. And it's just a you got plenty of stories. Fascinating story. Yep. Yeah, it's just a, quite an experience. Quite an experience going down there, where baseball is almost a religion. Mm -hmm. Now tip for the strikeout. So he strikes out the side. And through three innings, he leads to nothing. What field was the site of the first night game in Major League history? That's a bunny question there. A bunny question. Easy. Crosley Field. Yep. Cincinnati. I mean, that's my guess. I don't know. We're right. We're, gonna, nice we're all going, guessing. Greg. Are just, you guessing? Just, just take the air out of the whole no, question. Wait a minute. Are you going to guess? We're gonna, no more fun. That's it. Well, it down. That doesn't mean it's right. Well, you've, you've had guesses before. Oh, okay. Now, now it's not fair for me to guess. Everybody else can guess. It is Crosley Field. All right. No more guesses for the play-by-play -play guy. Color wow. guys throughout guesses all the time. Wow. Oh, that's because you guys are wrong all the time. I get it. I should have pretended to be wrong. I just sit here and do what I'm told, I guess. Just don't don't guess. Let's knuckle Stevie. I'm, I'm gonna, just I'm, let's I'm, knuckle Stevie. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be napping now. Won't disturb you. There's one great word in the English language, and that's content. And that's what you just saw. That is content right there. <laughs> well, there is a second yeah, what, part what, to this uh, trivia What city we'll get it was that uh, Crosley Field in? That's Dribbled foul. Uh, how about the home team that day? Manny Ramirez wig. Steve's 71 unis. Yep, that's right. We came over to uh, Pure Stadium, had those double nets. They uh, they look good on a lot of guys, and there were some people they didn't look real good on. Foul territory. I, I love Danny Murta. I love him to death. My favorite manager, but double nets didn't do much for Danny.
By the way, you uh, had your I was signing, with, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, I went up with uh, Danny's granddaughter, Colleen Ronchek. Mm -hmm. We had a signing up at the Cranberry uh, li Library on uh, Saturday. Had a good time. A lot of people came out. Hear that broken bat. By the way, one of the guys that came up there is a guy that's been moving the Pirates uh, and visiting teams coming into Pittsburgh. Their equipment in and out of, of Pittsburgh, Forbes Field, Three River Stadium, PNC Park for a thousand years. Record? Record. The record fan, Bobby Record, was up there. He was the bat boy for the 1960 world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. Bob Record. Good to see him. And what a collection of memorabilia he had with him Saturday afternoon. A lot of fun. He was there to grab that book, The Whistling yeah, Irishman. The Whistling Irishman, yep. A lot of people believe that Danny Murtaugh is deserving of a Hall of Fame vote. Yeah, and you know, you talk about personalities and all those things, but the numbers uh, back up strong consideration. Mm -hmm. Owen one on Yanish. And now Owen two, and just maybe, There's maybe Morton getting into a bit of a groove, yeah, a feeling ball. a little bit confident now. And that was that was a, a, a good curveball, but he he would want it downstairs. When he's dealing, that's downstairs a little more bite to it. But uh, maybe the beginnings of uh, Charlie getting a little more confident with the breaking ball. Throwing some sliders, throwing some uh, curveballs. But you need two pitches. You need one of those breaking balls to complement the fastball. Bounces this curveball to the shortstop. And Sedeno, both assists in the inning. As Morton looks for his first one, two, three frame, he faces the pitcher Cueto. Cueto three for ten now in the season. A couple of strikeouts for Charlie. The uh, First one registered against Cueto. Followed the ball off, and he got Votto. One free pass. One ball, one strike on Cueto. Two outs, nobody on. A two nothing Reds lead. Nice time to come with a hook. A couple fastballs, and a guy like Cueto, pretty good young athlete. You keep throwing him fastballs, even though he's a pitcher. You know, he'll be thinking fastball. He can run into one and hit it hard. Nice time for Charlie to pull the string on the breaking ball. Let's see if he does it again. Yes. Good night. One, two, three. All those double knit unis. <laughs> Steve Blass and Bob Robertson winning the Silver World them. Series. That's not. Tomorrow they. Is that Rot Rot Rottweiler? Young Rot Rottweiler. I don't think so. All right. Tomorrow, Pirates and the Reds conclude this series, the final game of the nine game homestand, 12 35. That's a large dog. Is that a great day in there? Uh, I believe that is a great day. Very, very anxious to get those treats. Oh my. How did that not even nick his jersey? Roche buzzed by Cueto. That's amazing. Comes back with a breaking ball two and two. Fly ball hit well to right, but that's going to be playable at the track. 
We mentioned tomorrow 1235 first pitch come out early 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. Stop by the Trip Total Media Hall of Fame Club and meet former Pirates Bob Friend, John Wayner, and Chuck Tanner, the former Pirate skipper. They'll be signing autographs from 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. For tickets, visit Pirates.com or just come on out tomorrow. And you don't need a special ticket to stop by that Trip Total Media Hall of Fame Club here at PNC Park. Yeah, ask Bob Friend about that 1960 World Series against the vaunted New York Yankees. Still makes him smile. Pretty good representation there. Some uh, great eras of the Pirates history there. Bob Friend. Uh, Chuck Tanner takes you into those uh, glory days of the 70s. John Wayner, part of the uh, division teams of the 90s. The Rock. Chuck Tanner would have liked Andrew McCutcheon. He would have been part of that lumber and lightning team. But they could hit the ball and run. Chuck Tanner loved speed. Yeah. Loved to have teams with speed. Well, they traded for him. Manny Sanguian from uh, from the Pirates to Oakland. And the Pirates fired uh, Chuck Tanner. They went into a marketing campaign that uh, was all about Tanner bringing that brand of baseball to Pittsburgh. And he did. They did. Lumber and lightning. Another guy that in the not too distant future from from what we're hearing might fit that bill the McCutcheon style Jose Tabata at Triple A Indianapolis he's uh, hitting well over 300 he's among the league leaders in hitting and leads the International League in stolen bases 4 three on the put out McCutcheon is retired. We heard a lot about his abilities when we got him, and uh, really, he's nothing. He's done nothing to discourage anybody. I was asking Steve Pierce about that when he joined the team a little over a week ago. Some of the guys that really stood out, and he mentioned uh, Tabata. He said, "One thing I didn't realize how fast that guy was." Garrett Jones at the ball to the warning track in right center field in the second. Meanwhile, Mr. Cueto is buzzing through the Pirate uh, batting order, having given up just one hit, one base runner for the Pirates. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Tardy on that fastball at 92 miles an hour. Cueto's not the biggest guy in the world. 5'10", 211, solid. Those kind of guys, you ask, how can they throw so hard? Usually have very strong legs that they can push, and they get a lot of help. Man. Uh -huh. Popped up again. Shortstop, Yanish. It's been a breeze for Cueto so far through his four innings, blanking the Pirates and leading two to nothing. Edenton in the Florida State League, Brian Morris pitched six innings of three hit shutout baseball. His numbers are absolutely ridiculous. Seven starts. And 066 ERA in 41 innings, 34 hits. He's given up three earned runs with five walks and 36 strikeouts. And last night, the veteran Jeremy Powell, uh, named International League Pitcher of the Week, 2 0 and 069 ERA. Hayden Penn is starting tonight at AAA Indianapolis, converting him to a starter. The man that was uh, picked up on waivers just uh, at the end of spring training. and. Did yeah, pretty no, well. No walks. Right. No walks. Tonight. But Steve, that the Brian Morris thing is incredible. Yeah, I cannot believe. I, I just will not believe he's going to make another start at Bradenton. <laughs> he's his next start has to be at Altoona. We'll uh, we'll check in with Neil Huntington on his radio show on Sunday about that. But wow, you would think there's not much more you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Forty one innings, five three walks, runs. thirty six strikeouts, three earned runs. Morris. Came over in the big deal a couple of summers back. Dodgers and Red Sox. Jason Bay heading to Boston, of course. Manny Ramirez to the Dodgers. And Pirates got a handful of players. And Ryan Morris, a former first rounder of the Dodgers, really coming into his own now. Chris Heisey, comebacker. 
Even though it was an easy play for Morton Heisey hustling down the line. But we understand we're talking about Chris Heisey who picked up his first big league hit. The Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania now resident, grew up in Lancaster, PA and went to Messiah College. We we're told that uh, Chris Heisey in the high school, Donegal High School in Mount Joy, PA, which is in the central part of the state. Uh, his coach is uh, here tonight, Bob Robertson's son-in-law. Julie is Bob Robertson's daughter, and uh, his son-in-law, Chris, coached Chris Heisey at Donegal High School in Mount Joy, and they are both here tonight to watch Chris Heisey play. I'd be proud of that for sure. Good to hear from Bob Robertson and the family. Chris and Julie Miller in attendance tonight. And Bob Robertson, we just saw your former first baseman uh, in that 71 World Series clip. Yep. Leaping into the arms, the big man. Uh, I wonder if people remember, they remember Bob's career and, and, and the power he had. I wonder if they remember later on that uh, he was uh, a coach that was doing a lot of work with Jeff Bagwell. Did a lot of work, personalized coaching for Jeff Bagwell back in the day and Jeff Bagwell uh, remembered that uh, when I had a chance to talk with the Astros first baseman I thought you were going to say that, uh, that from what I've read and for you and others have told me that Bob Robertson of course an outstanding big power hitter but he was one of the better defensive first basemen in the league at that time yes yes one of the best big guy but uh, quick hands Quick hands and also a, a, a real good ability as a right hand throwing first baseman to throw get the throw to second base and start a double play quick enough to turn get that good straight on uh, angle to second base. Bob Robertson was very much above average defensively terrific first baseman. Strike three you heard the call. And Brandon Phillips no way that was not a strike. To see the home plate umpire Greg Gibson nodding. Yes, it was. And uh, Pirates got a call, I think. A lot of times you see that curveball inside and it's curving around. By the time it gets to the catcher, it looks like it's lined up with that inside corner, but those kind of pitches can curve around the strike zone. Sacrifice fly and a strikeout. Joey Votto tonight. Red scoring two first inning runs. So tip of the cap to Charlie Morton. A little shaky work in the first inning, but uh, he is settled in. Now they're, they're going to start to work in the pirate bullpen uh, at, at, at some point, and it looks like it. Uh, Perhaps might be beginning now. No, Charlie's not due up for a while. He might be able to get six innings out after throwing a ton of pitches early in this ball game. Thought I saw the phone ringing, but uh, not to be two outs here. Not much happening. Charlie trucking along quite nicely here in the fifth inning. Mm, close pitch there. Doesn't get the call. Two, three, go the Reds. Charlie Morton is settling down. Halfway mark, two nothing Reds. Live in concert, plus, of course, some belly fireworks. A PNC Park favorite. Collective Soul performing all their biggest hits, including Shine, The World I Know, and Better Now. The tickets visit pirates.com. One ball, one strike on Domit. We need to start getting better now. Yeah. Cueto has been dominant. One base runner. The Cedeno one out single in the third has been it. A ball and two strikes on Domit. Oh. 
offers that pitch up and away. It's not Ryan's best, the finest at that. Saw him go upstairs a little bit, and as I used to say, work the ladder. Went up the ladder. I'm going to swing it a high one, I'll give you a higher one. It's Charlie Morton there with Joe Kerrigan. Hit a ball, almost uh, reached the wall in center field. Uh, an interesting uh, outing. Cueto has been dominant. Two ground ball outs. Yeah. Four strike counts. A lot of fly balls. A lot of balls hit up in the air. A bit like last night. Pirates had five hits last night. One of them, the home run by Cedeno, accounting for the only run against Arroyo, Rhodes, and Cordero. Even on Millage. One out in the fifth. Last five games, Village hitting 353. Cueto has not walked a man. Season high, four free passes against the Pirates April the 17th. And the shortstop, Janish, retires Millage. Last time out for Johnny Cueto against the Mets. Six innings, three runs given up. Not bad work, but nothing compared to tonight so far. Three and one in his career at PNC Park. An ERA of 341 in this yard. Time he picked it up, uh, reaching back, get it up to 94 miles an hour. He's been 90, 91, 92 most of the night. Getting loose. One ball, one strike on Delvin Young with two outs, nobody on. And a pop up. Easy play for Yanish. Cueto keeps on rolling. Through five, two nothing Cincy. Kiki Wamora made in the second inning off the bat of Brandon Phillips. Running off that potential hit into the final out. Freeze cam brought to you by Coors Light. The world's most refreshing beer. Scott Rowland has doubled in a run and singled. Morton has retired eight straight since that Rowland third inning base hit. There's the good hook. In tandem with a good sharp fastball to start it out. 0 and 1 with the fastball, and now the curveball down underneath. This curveball can be that good. And then the fastball to come back, doesn't catch up with it a little bit late. Three fine pitches thrown by Charlie to start the sixth inning. I didn't realize they had a pierogi song now. We got a hot dog song. Why shouldn't they have a pierogi song? A great pierogi race. Oliver Onion.
and Hannah. Hit deep to right center field. Delwyn Young back. Oh, makes a heck of a try. And heading toward third, Jay Bruce as he hit a shot to the gap in right center field. Delwyn Young, an all out effort. Went a long way on the warning track to the deepest part of right center field. And because the ball had so much height, it's either going to be a spectacular catch or it's going to be three easy bases. The effort was made, and Jay Bruce gets the triple. That close. Wow. And now the infield end with Johnny Gomes at the plate. A triple for Bruce. Can't afford to give him any more. Johnny at the plate, but the Johnny on the mound has been the story for Cincinnati. And jammed him and popped it up. Shallow center. McCutcheon. Runner holds at third. Nice job by Charlie. One more step. He's scheduled to be the second batter up in the bottom half of the sixth inning. He's closing in on 100 pitches, and he has really done a nice job since struggling in the first and throwing a lot of pitches in the second. That zero he put up in the second was big. Capped off by the fine play by Aki at second base. Put the zero up after the two spot in the first inning. Since then, he's been terrific. Yeah, and you look at the two hits that got it going. Chris Heisey just mm -hmm. a measly infield single to the third baseman, LaRoche. Heisey just did beat the throw, and then a hit and run single by Phillips. Really a routine ground ball, but right through the hole. And those two men scored after a sacrifice fly and a double. Still work to do to keep that runner at third base as he faces Ramon Hernandez. Hernandez hit very slow roller into right field in the second for a base hit. And with a broken bat bouncer to Ronnie Cedeno in the fourth. Charlie, like any starter, had, he probably has an idea that this is going to be it for him. So I'll make sure he doesn't rush. Take your time. Get this one out. Leave it at 2 nothing. And uh, I've been in these kind of situations. You know this this is it for you. So you want to finish it up with a with a zero. And uh, sometimes you get preoccupied that. And that, uh, that Tends to be somewhat of a trap. So keep on doing what you've been doing, Charlie. Good looking slider there. That had that sharp bite down and away. That this is the perfect slider. You cannot do much with that. It's hard to lay off it because it looks like a fastball coming in and just has that sharp cut at the end. Time, Charlie. Oh, line drive into the gap in right center field. Ramon Hernandez, a big two out double to make it 3 0 Reds. And it looked like a pretty good pitch that he hit. It was the off speed pitch. It looked like he went downstairs and got it. That's a good pitch. You got to just tip your cap to Hernandez. Did a good piece of hitting right there. But as you say, that is a big run the way Cueto has been stuffing the Pirates. No runs through his first five on one hit. Take 
Intentionally walk Yanish to get to Cueto. Just a second walk. Nothing established yet. The Pirates are going to have four more at bats. Keep it where it is. Play ball for the chance to have your team recognized as the Triv Total Media Youth Baseball or Softball Team of the Month. Write a short essay to baseball at fsnpittsburgh.net telling us why, and your team could be featured during a Triv Total Media Pirates pregame show. Short essay to baseball at fsnpittsburgh.net. Strikeouts on his dance card so far tonight. Need another one. Charlie, two thirds of the way there. Mm, we got a serious duel going on up in the stands. Oh, two count on Cueto. Just stays alive. I think uh, Charlie could just wind up and hold on to the ball right now. Trying to be swinging. Yeah. Two shots into the gap in right center here in the sixth inning have given the Reds a three nothing advantage. Lifts one to the first baseman Jones. So the Reds pick up a third run. Meanwhile, Johnny Cueto is pitching a one hit shutout into the sixth. Lifting his third home run of the year, got the Bucks to within one. Reds went on to win the game two to one. That's the cold hard blast brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And Sedania will lead off. The bottom of the sixth inning. Cold hard facts are that Guido is dominating. One hit it was Cedeno's one out single in the third. Cedeno now four for seven in his career against Guido. Jeff Clement comes out on deck to bat for Charlie Morton. Ball one on Cedeno. Sedeno with now three home runs, nine RBIs. Oh! Got him. He's hit by the pitch. Let's see if he's all right. Not, not real happy. Cueto has just barely missed two or three batters prior to this. Yeah. He buzzed Delwin Young. And Andy LaRoche. Yeah. Greg, uh, while we have a moment, I want to pass along condolences to the family and friends of Tom Morosevich from Steubenville. Uh, uh, got his sister who lives up in our neighborhood, has been a very good friend, and uh, Tom passed away. Last night, a very popular man and a great athlete in the valley. Uh, Tom Arasovich from Steubenville. Our condolences go out to the entire family. So then you're going to stay in the ball game. Yeah, he uh, graduated uh, Central athlete. Catholic uh, High School in Steubenville. So then you will stay in the ball game. See 
achievement for the achiever in us all. Pirates pinch hitters of the year. Nine games this month in particular, seven for 12. And for the season, batting 300 with six RBIs. And a pinch hitting roll for Jeff Clement. Batting for Morton. career numbers just 18 at bats Clement was one for four starting at first base last night and 2-0 in -oh time call DJ Carrasco will be the new Pirates pitcher nice to get something going at the bottom part of the batting order and go up to the top arch trailing by three certainly not insurmountable Two oak count on Clement. As we said earlier, Cueto has given up four dingers. Ball fouled out of play. Still nothing off that velocity. 93, 94 now for Cueto. But Jeff out in front of the count two and one. This ball hard to center field. Back is Heisey. Clement flies to the warning track in center for the first out of the sixth inning. Another fly ball. And a lot of warning track business by the Pirates both last night and tonight. Not quite getting enough. The they're, air has something to do with it, too. Well, the air, it, it's, it's cold, but there's also a kind of a trailing breeze coming from up the river into the, the batter's face. So the ball not carrying like it can on some nights when it, uh, you got a little gentle breeze going the other way. Once again, the wrong part of the ballpark. Well, that ball hit right on the button, and there's a, a disappointment for the pirate. That's a big item for Johnny Quater to get an out out of uh, that kind of contact. Percentage of the times you can get stung by a ball that's hit like that. It's a ball and a strike on Aki Iwamura. But as they say, a lot of baseball left. But uh, you'd like to get it going here, sixth inning. Only 72 pitches thrown by Cueto. That's called a strike, much to Iwamura's disappointment. One and two. Manager Dusty Baker. The Reds playing much better. They've won 10 of their last 14, 12 of their last 19 games. Takes off for second, and they a double play. Strike him out, throw him out. Strike him out, throw him out. Double play. Part one. Part two. Favor the Reds through six innings. Just one pirate hit. Charlie Morton goes six, gives up three runs on seven hits. And 
Now DJ Carrasco facing Chris Heisey in the top of the order. Seven straight scoreless appearances for DJ. Charlie Morton walked a couple, one intentional. So the control continues to be good for Charlie. And uh, you know, the, the the outing, how do how do you grade? I'd give him I give him a B plus on his outing. Gave up two in the first. Came that close to running the table uh, with zeros the rest of the way. Just eludes Iwamura's glove and the rookie Chris Heisey has his first two major league hits and on base for the third time. Just out of the re I don't know. Did you get a piece of that? I'm not sure the ball was blistered. That close. Brandon Phillips has singled, grounded out, and struck out looking. Scored in the first inning. Brandon Phillips. Uh, had a sit down chat with skipper Dusty Baker last week. Dusty Baker said he met with Brandon Phillips about a play last Tuesday where Phillips didn't hustle all the way on a drive off the wall in left field and a pickoff drive very close. I was thinking that Heisey might like to go. He stole 27 bases a couple of years ago in the minor leagues. And, uh, perfect opportunity. Little hesitation, little twitch there before he came back to first base. Close, but no cigar. Tashner up in the bullpen. Want to know on Brandon Phillips. Phillips hit that fly ball off the wall in left field and kind of admired it. Thought it was going to be a home run. It turned out to be just a double. Karam passed Angel Pagan. Should have been a triple. Cost them a run. As they pay attention to Heisey. Chris Heisey, Messiah College, a Christian college in central Pennsylvania. And Heisey becomes the first player drafted and in the major leagues out of Messiah College. And there he goes. And got him. He will more of the tag, and Heisey is caught stealing. Rasco uh, worked him and worked him and worked him. He finally took off, and Ryan Domit delivers, and they get him. Hockey making the tag on the middle of the back in time. 2 4 on the caught stealing. Phillip showed bunt, pulled back. Takes ball two. Dusty Baker said that uh, he has talked to Brandon Phillips about that hustle issue. Say so we talked to Brandon quite often. Two and two. Baker said he he hears that Brandon Phillips is better these days than he used to be. But he had an interesting quote. Dusty Baker did. He said, "What's tough as a manager." Is when you've got an A student that's getting B's. And that goes back to something you said for a long time, Steve. And how good do you want to be? Do you want to be the very best? Not yeah. just to make it to the big leagues and be an okay player, but do you have it in you to be the very best you can be? Yeah. Find out how good a big league player you can be, just not a big leaguer. You want to sit on that back porch when you're 80 years old and say, Yeah, I made it. Boy, I wonder how good I could have been. Another sidewinder that gets fouled down the right field line.
Think of how hard you worked to get it to the big leagues. Think of how many guys that you know fell by the wayside, teammates, opponents, for a, a number of reasons, a ton of reasons, but you made it. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to those people, too, because you're carrying their banner. To all the people that tried, didn't quite get there. Three and two on Brandon Phillips. Phillips was the last man that Domit caught stealing before Heisey. Opponents have stolen 19 straight since. And that word gets around. Yeah. April 17th, Phillips was caught stealing, and he draws the one-out walk. And John that's going to be that for DJ. Left-hand hitter Joey Votto coming to the plate. John Russell. And a call to the pen. The Columbia Gas 8-1-1 call to the pen. Runner at first base. One out in the seventh, and the Reds lead it three to nothing. Two hits in the big leagues. He has also scored a run and drawn a walk. Ronnie Cedeno on base twice. The only man to reach against Johnny Cueto, who is pitching a one-hit shutout through his six innings. Lefty Jack Tashner. Averaging a strike out an inning. That kind of round those things off. Kind of simplifies it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. LaRoche. Off balance. No. Infield hit. They had a shift on. With Cedeno cheated toward second. And so LaRoche had to come over and in. That's her. They're lined up just simply too far for Andy to come in, get the ball, make the throw, have it be in time. First and second one out, the better Scott Rowland. Well, so many people say, oh, it beat the shift, shouldn't have the shift on. It would have been an out, da-da-da. Well, if the shift works more times than it doesn't, then uh, you just let that kind of comment go by. It's got to work more than it doesn't. You stop doing it. You always notice when it doesn't work. You don't notice the times, mm -hmm. so many times that it does. Pirates need that ground ball right now. Roland popped up. In the sixth inning, doubled in the first, singled in the third. This season, batting 222 against lefties. Just 18 at bats. And then Cedeno over towards second, trying to keep Phillips close. Yeah, and you can't forget about him. He, he's a good base runner. He's quick. He'll steal a base if you don't keep track of him. count now on Roland. Three and oh. How much of that is just Jack Tashner? 
or how much of an effect the uh, concern about Brandon Phillips is at second base. Two on, one out, three nothing Reds. They're a, a big hit away from just about putting it away. The way Cueto's pitching, it's tough enough. And then keep in mind, safe situations belong to Francisco Cordero. He is that tough. So you've got to keep them right where they are now, and then you basically have two innings to work with. It's not an absolute, but uh, exactly make you make a good point with how good Mr. Cordero can be. We have uh, given him some challenges, but over 250 saves. Roland fouls this ball out of play and now three and two on the veteran third baseman Scott Roland who was willing to restructure his contract over the winter took uh, less money this year. Salary was uh, reduced to six million dollars from eleven million and the contract will go through 2012. The Reds were twenty seven and thirteen. Last year once he got in the lineup to stay he was hurt when he first came over and this season the Reds uh, when Roland is in there as their third baseman they're 16 and 11. Well they'll be able to handle that it won't be any tax sales for Scott even with that reduced salary. On ball four. A lot of people wondered uh, what Walt Jockety was doing when he went after this veteran and then signed him through 2012. But he thought it was awfully important to bring in that presence that I hear so much about the veteran presence. But there's more to it than just what a guy does in the clubhouse, Steve. A guy can have this quote veteran presence, but if he doesn't produce on the field, it's worthless. Yep. This guy's a leader because of what he does on the field. Yeah, Roland. It, it just can't work the way, what, exactly what you're talking about. It can't work that way. You can be the best guy and uh, have had the best career. But if you're not playing well, that's why uh, guys lead by example, by production. A lot of your leaders are the guys who produce. Well, and I, I still go tonight. back to that thing, too. You know, a lot of what, uh, what leads you is yourself. Uh, but it, it's good to watch this guy go about his work. Uh, you can't. Help but admire that, and sometimes you want to you want to follow that. You want to you want to make sure that uh, you do your part. A visit to the mound before Tashner faces Jay Bruce. I remember coming up and I playing with Roberto Clemente. I didn't want to embarrass myself with, uh, in front of him. A little sideline to what a guy like Roland can mean to some younger players. Bases are loaded. Phillips at third base. He walked. The infield hit for Joey Votto and the free pass to Scott Rowland. 0 and 2 on Jay Bruce with one out. The infield at double play depth. Tashner now with an 0 2 count looks for a strikeout. Mm -hmm. And he's been averaging one per inning, as we said. A 1 2 count on Bruce. You stay outside or come back in. Ryan Domit will tell you. Watch where he sets up. Back away. Okay, so you've had your free ride for two pitches now after you got out in front 0 and 2. Now it's time to get down and dirty. And most of the time, these left handers like to stay away. Left hand pitchers like to stay away from these left hand batters. Every once in a while, you can stand them up, lock them up inside. Not this time. I'll stay out of it. And a base hit for Jay Bruce. Phillips scores. Votto waved home. And Votto will score, I believe. Yes. He went around and then slap tagged the plate as Bruce delivers on the 2 2 pitch and gives the Reds now a 5 0 lead. That's like a dagger right now. 
curveball not quite far enough out. Jay Bruce turns it back around and all of a sudden it's five to nothing and John Russell's going to make yet another change. One of those runs charged to Carrasco. And Bruce with his second hit. It's a two run single here in the seventh. Columbia Gas 8 1 1 call to the pen. At least there's somebody having fun tonight. Jeff, part of that 2 0 win over the Cardinals Saturday night. Six scoreless innings comes on here to work in what has become a very difficult top of the seventh. Two so far for the Reds. They're still in business with runners at first and second. Johnny Gomes 0 for 3. Overall record for. Jeff Carson's. They had to make a decision. Either Carson's or Burris stayed in the rotation when Ollendorf returned and they decided to go with the lefty Burris. Count 0 and 2. Yesterday the Pirates designated for assignment Brian Bass. The right hander who had done some bullpen work. And then Burris. Getting in some side work as yes, uh, he is due to pitch during the upcoming series in Chicago. He will pitch on Friday afternoon against the Cubs. What happens there on a miserable night? Sometimes you don't go out and throw beforehand if you're going to throw a sideline. Just go out and do it during the course of the ball game. It's not unheard of. It's not all that common anymore. Used to be a fairly common practice. You're throwing on the side during the game if you're an established starter. Carstens retires Johnny Gomes. A couple of good sliders. The first pitch of the at bat and that last one. In the strike zone, batter chases, not much he can do with it. Can't reach it. Strikeout. Big base hit last time up for Ramon Hernandez. Hitting the Reds their third run. Turned 34 years old in nine days. Mona Hernandez. Tonight he has singled, grounded out, and doubled in a run. Carstens. Probably know by now was taken off the 40 man roster this winter. The Pirates wanted to sign Chris Jakubowskis onto their 40 man and to make room, they took Karstens off. Nobody else grabbed him. The Pirates re signed him to a minor league deal. Two and one on Hernandez in his second year with the Reds. Well, Jeff has been kind of an intriguing guy. Uh, you know, the. the Debut he made with the Pirates that great start against the Cubs and then the better one uh, when he had the perfect game going against Randy Johnson. So he has had his moments including his great work Saturday night against the Cardinals. So Daniel will keep it himself. The Reds pick up a couple of more and it's seventh inning stretch time and it's certainly time to stretch out some hits against Johnny Cueto. Be the quote home team. JJ Hardy placed on the 15th day disabled list. The strike is called. Dice K Matsuzaka doing a nice job tonight in his comeback for Boston. 
look at this. And another story is right here in Pittsburgh with Johnny Cueto, one hitting the Pirates. Johnny Cueto, only 77 pitches. He's been good and he's been quick. Automotive.com hits leaders. Andrew McCutcheon among them with 40. And right to the shortstop, Yanish. It was Johnny Cueto, and why is he doing these things to the Pirates? Came into the game against the Bucks. Uh, as you said, the Pirates with some heady averages against him, but six and two. And he's just trucking right along. Last night in seven plus innings against Bronson Arroyo, the Pirates had five hits. And Garrett Jones, a ball to the warning track in right center field in the second inning, pocket to a shortstop in the fourth. Two base runners for the Pirates. These Reds uh, remembering the sweep when they were in here recently. Trying to turn that whole thing upside down. Nothing right now. Johnny Cueto does not have a complete game. It's his third major league season. He's heading in that direction. Boy, seven pitches. It's a breeze for Cueto and the Reds so far through seven. Hosted the Holding with the Bucks charity event. What's that? Raising money for the uh, Western Pennsylvania. Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, as well as the uh, West Virginia. Leukemia Different and styles uh, of delivering the bowling ball. Now, did you see what I see there, saw there, Steve, on the uh, the video there of Bob Walk? Balls popped up. Or am I wrong? Is it possible that, that he was so bad last year that? Well, look, aren't those those bumpers that they use for kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they put the, them on the, uh, the, the bumpers. The gutter guards. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they'd go on somebody's roof. The gutter guards. Mm. No wonder he was able to bowl 103. You know, that. Uh, now we got evidence. We've got, we got the evidence now. <laughs> the gutter guards. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, nice try by Daniel and Jones, but it's Cueto who gets the hit. A lot of hustle. He's up five nothing. He's worked very hard with his pitching, but he lays out this base hit. And look at this. That's uh, there's some effort right there. I'll say. Chris Heisey. Fly ball to left. It's well hit. And Chris Heisey has his first major league home run. What a night for this, this Central Pennsylvania native. This is like Jay Bruce stuff. Three hits. His first career hit in the first inning, his first career home run. And the Reds blow it open. Correct part of the ballpark for the high fly ball. Doesn't bank it by much, but it makes it. You're right. A night he won't forget. Chris Heisey. His first home run last week. He had his first start in the big leagues against the Mets 
in Cincinnati. Promoted from uh, AAA Louisville on April the 30th. Down at uh, Louisville, he was hitting 241 with four homers. Last year's minor league player of the year. He thought that uh, the ball that is fair over the third base back by Brandon Phillips. And Phillips thinking two. And he is there standing with a double. Second hit for Phillips. He's on base for the third time. This ball smoke, smoke right over the bag. And now Joey Votto. Foul ball. Mentioned that uh, Chris Heisey is the first Messiah College player ever to make it to the major leagues. He told us he is the third player ever signed out of Messiah College. Christian school in central Pennsylvania. Dave Henniger was drafted in the 21st round by the Kansas City Royals five years ago. Didn't make it to the big leagues, nor did Chris Regan who was signed as a free agent out of Messiah College by the Devil Rays. But he thought that Henniger was going to make it to the game tonight. And what a night Chris Heisey has had. 7-0 in favor of the Reds. And the Pirate bats just as cold as the evening. Wow, that ball's ripped. Short hops the wall. Votto into second base with a run scoring double. 8 0. Reds are having some fun. Here comes Joe Kerrigan as Votto has his second hit. Of the game. He picks up his 22nd RBI of the year. And the Pirates heading down that path again, Steve. And when they lose, many times they lose big. The Pirates, uh, despite that, the disparity in the runs allowed, runs scored category, started the day only for. Games under 500. Reason for Chris Heisey to smile for sure. Yep, that is about to change. On five. Scott Rowland has been on base three times. RBI double in the first. Oh, Rowland will not bat. Pinch hitter Miguel Cairo batting for Rowland. As Dusty Baker gets. An opportunity to rest his veteran and Cairo, another veteran, may get an at bat. He's been around at least as long or longer. Been negotiating, I guess, with the uh, Chris Heisey home run ball out in left field. Trying to capture the souvenir. Lined to the shortstop. Looks like a Reds fan ended up with it. Still talking about it. Yeah, get to. An autographed, uh, probably another autographed ball, if not uh, more from <laughs> Negotiations continue. Jay Bruce takes ball one. Bruce, two hits. 14 hits for the Reds.
Cruz had a two-run single in the seventh. Tripled and scored in the sixth. Well, we were talking last night about the uh, that draft, and this base hit in the right will score another. Jay Bruce has his third hit, his third RBI, and the Reds pour it on here. Nine nothing. Bruce part of that amazing 2005 draft. As he gets the base hit here to bring it up to nine zip, Bruce was picked 12th overall out of Westbrook High School in Texas. The Pirates had selected Andrew McCutcheon out of Fort Meade High School in Florida, the previous pick. But if you look up and down that first round of 2005, it's an all timer. First pick in that draft was Justin Upton by the Diamondbacks. Alex Gordon went second to the Royals out of the University of Nebraska. The Mariners selected Jeff Clement out of USC. Clement now a bucko, of course. Ryan Zimmerman went next out of the University of Virginia. Then it was Ryan Braun. That's ball smoked foul. Braun out of the University of Miami. Ricky Romero, the left-handed pitcher, was selected out of Cal State Fullerton by Toronto. The next player picked in that 2005 draft out of Cal State Long Beach by the Rockies was Troy Tulowitzki. Two picks later in that first round, the Mets selected Mike Pelfrey. The Tigers were next. They selected Cameron Maven. Then it was McCutcheon and Bruce. Wow. Later in that first round, the Marlins selected Chris Volstad, the strikeout, and the list included Jacoby Ellsbury and Colby Rasmus. Four runs in the eighth and a 9-0 Reds lead. The road head is brought to you by Toyota moving forward and tomorrow, the final game of the homestand, Homer Bailey looks for his first win. He'll be opposed by Zach Duke. 12-35 start as Domit lifts one to left. One pitch, one out. Johnny Cueto is five outs away from the shutout. And one man over the minimum faced. And when that occurred in the third inning, he struck out three batters in and around that one runner. Base hit by Cedeno. The other runner, uh, Cedeno, also hit by a pitch, but erased on the double play. Strike him out, throw him out. Big swing and a miss from Millage. A pitch upstairs. Now well, they got the bat and returned for the home run ball. Look at this. Three That's pitches to us. That's like uh, they're in a hurry. Puck's just uh, up there swinging away and down nine nothing. Look at that. 85 pitches. That's uh, Greg Maddox. Light. Yeah. Easily the longest outing of the year for Cueto. You wonder if Dusty will let him run the table. He's not had a complete game as we said his first two years. His longest start before tonight. Eight innings last May 3rd, 2009 here at PNC Park. May 3rd, last year against the Buccos, he went eight. Third full season in the major leagues. Very impressive work tonight. You have to wonder if Dusty Baker is a little gun shy. I don't think he is. I don't think he pays any attention to what was said about him in uh, Chicago and guys like uh, Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor were injured and some were kind of pointing fingers, swing and a miss. Goodness gracious. Wow. Seven pitches with the strikeout. Wow. Second. And of course, they saved the baseball and fooled Heisey by tossing a decoy into the seats. In the seventh inning, a base hit. And in the eighth inning, his first major league home run. A big night for the rookie. Out of Messiah College, Chris Heisey. Mr. Cueto just kind of leisurely trotting around. 
And as we said, they negotiated, and uh, Isaac will have that baseball for his trophy case, first big league home run. And so uh, Brian Burris will get some work in. Burris has not pitched since Thursday, his start here against the Cubs when he went seven shutout innings, and he is scheduled to start Friday in a ground ball to third by Ramon Hernandez. So sometimes you can throw on the side in the middle. It's like Paul Yanish and Johnny Gomes, the only players without a hit tonight. But that includes Cueto. The bullpen is quiet. So are the pirate bats. by Delwyn Young. Pirates had a couple of one, two, three innings when Charlie Morton got squared away. Charlie in the fourth and fifth. Six up and six down in those two innings. Giving up the two in the first and then one more before departing and then the Reds got it going with the bats. Cueto picked up his fourth hit of the season, the infield hit in the eighth. And it would appear that the only question now on this one. 9 nothing lead. Is he going to get the complete game shutout? Dusty Baker going to give him every chance. Two and two. Burris will start Friday against Tom Gorzolani at Wrigley Field. There we go. Cueto now will head to the mound in search of his first career complete game and shutout. He has been absolutely terrific. Early and here's the one blemish just out of the reach of the shortstop. And since then, he has just been trucking. Face one batter over the minimum. He's been outstanding. He'll come out for the ninth to try to put a lid on it. That's his ledger. Very impressive work. One hit. This will be the Reds' first complete game of the season. They have been shut out twice. But this would be their first time shutting out an opponent. And it would be the fourth time the Pirates have been shut out. Sedeno takes two pitches. He's the only man to have reached tonight a hit and hit by a pitch. Was that hit off the glove of the shortstop, Janish? Steve? Was that a yes, ground? Just out of really, the reach, yeah. I mean, be talking something uh, historic had that ball just been a few inches more toward Yanish. We've been talking about a no no. Yep, he has been that good tonight. He's been good and he's been efficient. He's 
might be the longest timed at bat so far for him tonight against him. That is his 95th pitch and his seventh strikeout. Pirates post game coming up next. Extended highlights and analysis. Plus, our closer Kent Tacoby ready to answer your questions and break down key plays. Pirates post game is next here on FSN. Steve Pierce bats for Brian Burris. These are the kind of situations you really like to pinch hit in, isn't it? Yo, sure. The guys just yeah. blowing everybody away. They get a bat, get up there in the ninth inning. Santa has left going? the building. Santa's seen enough. No, he's got just, oh, okay, a little rally seat. I thought he was going to head back up the chimney. Thanks for the coal, guys. Get coal in your stocking? No, I have to say. You? There were some years I didn't get a stocking. One hundredth pitch and a strikeout of Pierce. Not just a so-so pitch to get an out. That was a fastball. Still a good fastball right on the outside corner. A pitcher's pitch here in the bottom of the ninth inning. It has been his night. He has matched his career high with eight strikeouts. He's done that three times in his career, including didn't he have, earlier this season. Didn't he have ten in his debut? The notes say career high eight. Okay. No matter. Yep. Five, Done three, that, that quick. I mean, that was convincing. A one hit whitewash of the Pirates. Johnny Cueto, his first career complete game, and it is a masterpiece. Yep, you have to acknowledge that. He was just dynamite tonight. The Pirates never got anything going. They tried to stay close for a while, but uh, then the ball game got away. It was the Cincinnati Reds all the way tonight. Nine zip final and zip is the operative term. He just zipped through this Pirates lineup up and down 102 pitches for Johnny Cueto to improve to two and one in his first career.